Okay, we're ready to go now for the main commissioning. We've put our system together. Uh, we've got it mounted in an orientation which we've got on the roof. It's at the right angle, all fixed and fastened. You've gone over everything. You've checked all your, your connections on all your plugs, your fittings, your fill assemblies, your unions, uh, your hot, your cold pipes. Everything's ready to go. You can see this is one of our test models. So we've just got a, we've got just the yard hose connected to this, but it's under full mains pressure right at the moment. Uh, and um, as you can see, with a bit of water coming out of there, this now is very critical that you do not commission the system unless you've got it under full mains pressure. The, the hoop strength of the tank requires pressure to be exerted from the inside out. From the outside in, could see collapse of the cylinder. And when you've done that, you'll put more than the 15 litres of closed circuit fluid in there to fill it and it will damage the tank. So please be warned, remember, it must have potable water, the tank must be full. If you open, if you've got a way of connecting it, you must have all the air purged out of it and it's got to be full of mains pressure. And do not turn the mains pressure water off to it. What you've got here is the, and mind my fingers coming in, but this is the best way I can point at it. This is uh, specifically the uh, information required for the closed circuit system. You see all the fitting connections and so on that we've, we've got there and a descriptor of what they are and what they're doing. This is the, um, the tank serial number with all the details uh, as normal uh, on all our tanks and this is common to the closed circuit as well. And last but not least the, uh, the electrical connection diagram at the top there. All are part of our requirement for AS2712 to have on there and this probably this will just help you through at a later stage. These are all UV stable labels so we should see these last um, uh, a good length of time out in the field. We've done a lot of testing on these just like we've done, we've done with all the rest of the equipment. This little attaché bag that you uh, have seen in the parts kit and I pointed out before has some uh, critical components in there for commissioning the system. Uh, we'd like to think that you could leave it on site with the owner when you're finished as this is the best location for it. If you want some for your own use afterwards please contact us we do have them as a spare part. But let me look, go through a little bit about what you're going to find in here. Obviously the, uh, the attaché bag uh, which will open at the top you'll see in it a push bike pump just a standard bicycle pump, uh, there are a dime a dozen, but it's critical for this. And there's more good chance that you will not have one in the um, in your your truck with you. So again, please leave it on site if you can. You will have also in there what we call a pelican pump. This little pelican pump we're going to show you later is how we put the heat transfer fluid into the collector and to the closed circuit system and uh, provides the adequate charge needed for it for frost protection. Because that's, above all else, the reason we use this system is for frost protection. The next thing we've got is a hose, which we're going to use to connect up from the uh, PTR valve to the fill assembly. Now this is for putting uh, just standard potable water into the closed circuit system. In the first instance to make sure it's all charged up and in the second is to ensure that we've got the adequate charge in the system. We're providing you five litres of the ST5 which is the heat transfer fluid that's got glycol in it, uh, propylene glycol, it's got dipotassium monohydrogen phosphate in it which is a pH buffer and food colouring so it can be seen if there is a leak you see it and some distilled water. So it's a very a, a, a correct proportion requirement to ensure that there is no frost damage done to the system. So the full five litres must be installed at, in every location around Australia with this uh, system. Outside of Australia, if you get to countries where temperate climates can drop well below zero for a long period of time, we, re we recommend two bottles of the heat transfer fluid. Uh, countries like South Korea, uh, Europe, so forth, it is important to ensure you protect against frost damage and two bottles in those locations is essential. Here in Australia, you can get away in most locations with one. Top of Mount Kosciuszko, probably recommend two bottles up there. So that's going to be a device which we'll go over and show you a little bit later. Last in there, we've got these two plugs and the purpose of these two, two plugs uh, in the commissioning process only is to close off your um, uh, to close off uh, some of the hot con connections and to block up some uh, fittings to make sure that we can give the um, uh, adequate pressure testing that we need for the system. Again, these become redundant after the commissioning is completed. You don't need them after that, but if you can put the kit back together and leave it with the homeowner, that'd be greatly appreciated. Okay. See, it's a nice sunny day here today. Um, We've got our collectors uh, into facing into the sun. Uh, they're getting a lot of solar energy absorbing in that. If I fill this up full of water now, 
and expect to commission this. If I've got any leaks or any small, uh, very, very minor leaks anywhere, it's going to be very hard to detect because the solar thermal expansion will probably overcome that. We'll keep pushing water out of it for a while. So you're going to get a false uh, positive, if you like. So what we're going to do is the best way to uh, to commission this system is, you know, there's a good chance you've been out at the job, got to the job, uh, say, 9 o'clock, you've run your pipes, you've done your electrical. This is the last thing you're going to do. So there's a good chance you're right into the heat of the afternoon by now, and there's going to be a lot of energy on that collector. So we're going to get a carton. Now, the best carton you've got is what the tank came in, nice and big, and we're going to open that up, and we're going to cover the collectors up using that. See, the carton is a perfect size. Now, this is a five square meter system. We have the five square meter and a four square meter system. So this is more than adequate enough cover uh, to cover up the uh, collector arrays. Now, what we've done is we've just put a toolbox on the bottom here. We acknowledge that on the on a roof, you're still gonna have a continuous slope. You won't st stop onto a, um, a horizontal uh, platform like I've got here. But if you can hold it down somehow, tape it on, just keep it in position so it's going to be there. Obviously, if it's not windy and it's not too steep, it won't slide off. Just hold it on, a bit of uh, bit of packing tape will be fine. Very important now is that we do want to see a visual on all our fittings. As we pressure test them, if we've got a leak anywhere, we will see water coming out of that area. We'll obviously use the gauge as the main barometer of, uh, of how it's sealed up, but we want, also want to make sure that there isn't any problems with the, uh, the fittings. So we're going to check all the fittings at all the corners and everywhere that the closed circuit system is connected to. Down the bottom here, obviously, we can just cut a little bit of a window open. You see the union there. That's, that's just there. In, in there, I've just used a, a Stanley and run a, run a little um, opening up there to see it. That's good enough for what we want to do here. Up the top, uh, we've got a, a, a flap at the top of the car. That can just fold down. You don't have to do anything there, and away you go. You've got everything you can see. It's all at your fingertips. Uh, if all else fails, just, you know, you just can't find it, then by all means, remove the Remove, if you're seeing it drop a lot of pressure, remove the carton and have a look at all the fittings to make sure there isn't a problem. And the worst case scenario, just check all the riser tubes in the collectors in case there's something coming out of the riser tubes as well. Heaven forbid, it could happen, there could be a leaking collector. Very rare to happen, but it's not impossible. And just a little tip, we use a staple, carton staple, to uh, hold our carton together. Uh, this is not something that you want to leave on the roof, particularly if you've got a colour bond roof. They are a copper staple, but you can scratch the colour bond roof. Just be careful of them, guys. There's a few of them. Just remove them. Um, take you two seconds to do, and it's uh, better than having to uh, uh, have to explain yourself to a, a, a disgruntled customer later. As uh, you saw, we had this beverage tube uh, cut to length in the commissioning kit and a fitting on the end of it. Now, we've connected it into the PTR valve, pressure temperature relief valve, which allows us access to the potable water out of the tank because remember we've got full mains pressure onto the tank. So this is a bit of a fail safe device to ensure that you do have water in your tank. If you can't open this up and get water out of it, uh, then there's a good chance you may not have water into your tank and that's essential before you start the commissioning. So if you see here, I've just tightened this up. Uh, I've just put it in there, it's all ready to go. Uh, make sure you don't cross thread it. It's only, uh, it's polybutylene, but it can be easily cross threaded as you can see. Uh, we've got water coming out of it now, and um, there's plenty of uh, plenty of water there, so we know we've got mains pressure to there. What we're going to do now is connect this to the fill assembly down at the bottom of the collector. So the Hotcon has two plugs provided the test kit for it. One is to plug up the Khalifi 100 kPa jacket vetting valve, which the purpose of that is to do it now so that we don't get any uh, false discharge out of that when we get up to the desired pressure setting that we want when we're commissioning the system. We want to check this under full operating conditions of 100 kPa, so having this valve discharge at 100 kPa would constantly be leaking and giving you a false reading. The other thing we've got is a little Filmac plug here that we'll plug, we'll put, plug this off later, but uh, in the meantime what we're going to do is we're going to fill the jacket up and this will be where the discharge of the fluid will come out through this uh, to start with and only after we're satisfied we've got full uh, pressure throughout the whole system we'll put this cap on but for the time being we'll leave this off just leave it up at top here with the spanner and uh, then we'll run our our beverage tube down to our fill assembly ready for connection so our beverage tube works like a water gauge 
we've got the full length of the collector down here, and all our collectors are the same length. They vary in width, but they're always the same length. We're going to put it over the barb connection. So you'll notice that we um, have this barb facing down the roof. The purpose of that is that when it does discharge, which we're going to let water out of it later, we want the water to flow down the roof. If it's on the side, which you, you can put it away that around the other side that comes out this side, that could shoot across, hit a tile, and get water underneath the tile during commissioning. Obviously, that's a bit of a nuisance for everybody. We don't want you to do that. So please, face the barb always down the roof like it is now. Now, I've got my hose, my beverage tube, which I've just connected to the PTR valve. It's all ready to go. All I need to do is just slip that onto there. Okay, so the hose clamp that we supply with the, the hose is just to ensure that when you've got mains pressure running through there, it doesn't leak and come off and, and uh, make a bit of a mess. Now, remember, what we're going to do is now, we're going to open this up now, this little tap up. We don't want to open it all the way up because that could that will spring out. So just, just take it back a few winds to make sure you've got enough enough open there and just leave that on your, uh, your connection on there. So that's all ready to go now. I'm going to turn the, um, the PTR valve on and we're going to start filling it with water. It's about 15 litres in there, so it will take uh, a few minutes before it's completely full, but you'll see it as it's discharging through the um, expansion vessel connection at the hot con. Okay, so we've got our fill um, tube connected to our PTR valve and down to our fill assembly. What we're going to do now is just put the potable water in there. We don't want to put the heat transferred fluid in yet. The last thing you want to do is put that in and then find a leak because you just dumped about 50 bucks worth of heat transfer fluid in there. So let's just use water, test it clearly just with clear water. This is the best way to go about using it right at the moment. So I'm going to open up the PT valve discharge. Okay, so we've got water coming out of our PTR valve down into our collector. It's going to fill up our collector, gradually pushing all the air and everything out and all our mantle around our jacket. Uh, our tank will be uh, full of water and we'll get a discharge. You'll already feel, if you put your finger over that, air coming out of that now. And there's our water, we've got it full. Now it's important now that you absolutely ensure that all air is discharged out of that. As you can see, it's running pretty freely. So I'd say that's pretty good now and I'll close that off. Okay, as you see now, there's water running out of there. There's plenty of fluid. We've filled up the, the collector and the, and the heat exchanger around the tank. We're going to put our little fill mac plug on top of this now to, to plug that up because what we want to do is seal the complete system up and now put it under pressure to get it up to the 100 kPa. So uh, let's put this on. Okay, that should be tight enough and we'll test it now. Now, the thing to be careful of here is that, you know, we do have... A limit to what this jacket can take. You see that you've got a gauge here, we only want to have no more than 100 kPa in there. You have the Khalifi valve which is the, the venting valve to protect the tank and the jacket uh, from overpressure now sealed off. So this is very critical that you don't take it above the 100 kPa test that we're going to apply. We won't fill it up using the PTR valve, that's a lazy way of doing it. What we're going to do is we're going to close it off down the bottom there and then we're going to put our pressure, uh, our bicycle pump on this and pump it up and add air to it which will in, in turn increase the pressure inside the system. So let me go down, we'll, my friend down there will close that off. Paul, can you close that off for me, thanks? As you can see, Paul's just tightening it all up now, making sure it's uh, nicely tight. Okay, so we can't put any more fluid in there. Okay, so there's no more, even if you turned on the hose here, you won't be able to get anything in there. So what we're going to do now is put the pressure into the system using the bicycle pump. So we've got our push bike pump uh, which you recall we had in our test kit satchel to start with. I'm going to remove the, um, the dust cap on the Schroeder valve, put it in a pocket. Let's make sure that goes back on afterwards. We want to protect this system and, and having that valve open is not a good way to protect the system. It will leak out of there. I'm going to apply, put my push bike pump on there now just like you did as a, when you're riding your bike. And everything's nice and tight. And then we're going to start applying a bit of muscle and putting air in there to ensure now the pressure in the gauge goes up to 100 kPa. So on the gauge here, we've preset uh, the, um, uh, the red arrow, the indicator arrow, at 100 kPa. So that's been done in the, in the factory. So it's because it's in the, normally it will be in the weatherproof enclosure, you won't be able to get to that unless you remove the cover. So that's set at 100 kPa. We now want to take our pressure in the tank up to 100 kPa. So I'm starting to pump that up now. 
and what you're seeing is the black arrow going up to 100 kPa. You'll hear a bit of action inside the tank too. There'll be a bit of noise and, and stuff. That's just um, the fluid and stuff uh, uh, moving around. So we're close to 100 kPa now. In fact, we're just about on it. Say we're there now. There. Okay, so we take it up to 100 kPa and then what we're gonna do is remove the pump, make sure you don't get any backflow out of it. Okay, yeah, that was, that was. All right. Have we got it at 100 kPa? Uh, I don't want to get my head in front of the camera, but it looks like it's there. Is it dropping down? Yes. We're dropping down still, Paul. Yeah. So this uh, would indicate that we've got a leak somewhere. So now we've got to check our fittings to make sure that we've got everything sealed up correctly. All right? So give us five minutes and let's look and see what we can find. Okay, we've now found the leak that was in one of the fittings. We've tightened that up. Didn't take much, but it did have a significant impact on the pressure once you got it under a, on 100 kPa. Keep a rag on the roof with you to make sure that you wipe over any water so you know it is coming from somewhere. It's not just a bit of water that just splashed around up there that you can actually see what's happening with all your fittings. So go around and inspect all those. I've removed, when I remove my pump, inevitably because the Schroeder valve, the way they work, you will find that you'll lose or drop a little bit of pressure. So keep an eye here on your gauge to make sure where it finishes up at and just keep an eye on that and, and see. We're a bit below 100 kPa here. I've had, the, I've had the, uh, the luxury of having my gauge outside the enclosure. With, with your enclosure, you can remove the four screws and get into that to set this to the pressure that it finishes up at, which is quite easily done if you want to. Otherwise, just take it up to 100 kPa or a bit above it and see to make sure it doesn't drop back. Our gauge is holding firm now, you can see that, it's, it's sitting on there. Might even get a little bit of an increase because even though we've covered up the collectors, there's still a little bit of heat in the air, the collectors were hot before, so they've got a little bit of uh, inertia in there. The cool water will cool them down so you might get some, um, some moving around. Just hold it now and leave it and see what happens. Don't do anything if it uh, drops away, if it drops away too quickly then you have got a leak. But at this stage I'd say we've fixed our problem up, it's looking like it's holding and we want to keep it there for about five minutes to make sure that we don't have any problems. And that's so important that you've got the collectors covered because if you don't and you left it out in the sun for five minutes, pretty soon you'd have a very, very rapid expansion of, um, of thermosiphon action and thermal gain in those collectors and you would not be able to tell whether you had any minor leaks or not. And just remember, this has got to be tightened up and turned off. You don't want this to be discharging back up your pipe. Um, so make sure that's turned off. There's your uh, key and just tighten it up nicely and it looks all good. So what we're going to do now, we've got our pressure being held up there. I'm just going to go around, run my finger around the pipes, take a rag with you and just wipe around the pipes in case there was a bit of splash of water when we were uh, initially commissioning it and just check that you don't have any leaks coming from anywhere. If it's under pressure you'll feel it squirting out very, very quickly, otherwise you might get a dribble. Just make sure everything's nice and tight. Okay, so we've been uh, 15 minutes now, we went for a coffee break uh, just to um, check to see that nothing's moved. Uh, the pressure gauge has remained um, consistent. Uh, keep in mind if it was in the middle of the day you might have got a little bit of a creep increase in pressure in there, believe it or not. Uh, but this time of day as it's cooling off, if we were to have a leak we would definitely see pressure reduction. So it's perfect, we went around and we checked all our fittings, our closed circuit fittings here, here down the bottom, two unions and the hot connection back. Uh, our our uh, hot con connection at the top here with all our valves, the wall really good, our, our cleafy valve, our pressure gauge and our plug. We've done, done everything we can now to make sure that that's all okay. So we're, we're fairly safe in saying that we think we've got this all buttoned up and it's nice and tight. So we're not gonna have any more problems here now. The next stage is the fluid we put in there, remember, is just potable water at this stage. We haven't put the heat transfer fluid in, and that is so essential. That heat transfer fluid includes the antifreeze and all the other protective devices that we need. Now, keep in mind one thing. Our collectors are all copper, and our mantle heat exchange around our tank's all stainless steel. In the worst case scenario, if our collector had what they call it, our system had to drain down, that means it loses its charge, and air gets into the system, it is not going to be detrimental to the system. It will not do any harm to it. Some of our competitors use all steel. 
they depend on no oxygen getting into and around the jacket or the collectors. Their collectors are all steel, and if that happens within six months, they will be eaten out. As I've heard before, it could be dangerous. They'd have three or four, five thousand dollars worth of rust on their roof. Our system, if it drains down, will be okay to refix up that that uh, leak, and it will continue on without any problems at all. Mm -hmm.